Hello and welcome back to Linear Algebra, a video series where we talk a lot about vector spaces and matrices. Indeed, in today's part 29, we will talk about matrices again, especially about the identity matrix and inverses. However, before we start with that, I really want to thank all the nice people who support the channel on Steady via PayPal or by other means. Okay, then let's start with the topic of today, where we talk about matrices again. So we already know a matrix A with n columns and m rows corresponds to a linear map we can call FA, and this one goes from Rn into Rm. So here you already know linear maps are an important part of our course because they conserve our linear structure. So for example, we know they transform subspaces into subspaces again. However, to actually calculate with such linear maps, it's helpful to go to the matrices. And then we can just calculate with the matrices. And this calculation side of linear algebra is exactly the reason why we have this video today about matrices again. In particular, we will talk about how we can invert a matrix here. And this should translate to the map level, where it means that we find an inverse map. So this means we need a bijective map here and then we can invert it. However, before we do that, let's first discuss the definition of the identity matrix. More concretely, we want to define the n times n identity matrix. So it's a square matrix with n columns and n rows. And it's not complicated at all because we only have ones and zeros in this matrix. Indeed, on the diagonal we just find ones and all the other entries are just zero. And now it turns out, for this important matrix we have a lot of different notations. And I will just use such a bold one with index n. And in fact, often I will omit this index n because the dimension, the size of the identity matrix is clear from the context. Now, other notations you might find in books are for example a capital I, often also with an index N, or just a written ID as we have it for maps, either with a capital I or a lowercase i, and sometimes you find a capital E. Now, of course, it's not important which notation we use, it's just important that we know what the identity matrix can do. In fact, this is the reason why we have defined it in this way. Therefore, in the next step, let's write down the properties of the identity matrix. And you might already know, it has something to do with the matrix multiplication. More precisely, we see here, if we multiply a matrix B from the right hand side, it does not do anything. So after this multiplication, we still get the matrix B out again. However, in order to do this multiplication, it's important that B has n rows. Because otherwise, the multiplication would not be defined. On the other hand, we can also do the multiplication from the left hand side. And now this matrix A needs to have n columns. Hence, this multiplication here is also well defined and we see we get out A again. So it's not a hard calculation, but the result is that we have a new two element here with respect to the matrix multiplication. So the identity matrix is exactly this new two element with respect to the matrix multiplication. So it corresponds to the real number one, which is the new two element with respect to the multiplication in the real numbers. So you see, it's the same idea, but now with respect to a different operation. Moreover, of course, we can also see the identity matrix on the map level. This means we look at the corresponding linear map F1n. So as before, this is the linear map that is induced by the matrix. So in this case, it goes from Rn into Rn. And by definition, it means we send a vector x to the matrix multiplication Ax. So in this case, we have the identity matrix 1n times the vector x. However, there we already know, the identity matrix will not change anything, so we get out the vector x again. So in other words, we simply send x to x. Hence, the induced linear map is just the identity map from Rn to Rn. 
Of course, it makes sense that the identity map and the identity matrix are connected in this way. So in summary, now you see we have two ways to remember this identity matrix. On the one hand, you can say it's the matrix that corresponds to the linear transformation that does not change anything. On the other hand, you can say the identity matrix is the neutral element with respect to the matrix multiplication. Now, no matter which point of view we take, we always get to a new question, what are the inverses here? So now we are able to formulate inverses with respect to the matrix multiplication and inverses with respect to linear maps. And maybe here, let's start with the matrices first. And there, indeed, it's important that we consider square matrices. So if we take such a matrix A, then we search for another matrix A tilde. It should have the same size as A and fulfill the following. Namely, if we form the matrix multiplication A with A tilde, we get out the identity matrix 1. And indeed, this should work in both possible orders. So you see, it's the same idea we have for the real numbers. So if we would search for inverses with the real numbers, we would have the same equations here, just with the normal multiplication of real numbers. And there, it turns out, this works for all real numbers except zero. However, we will see that for matrices, this is more complicated. But we can immediately say, if such an A tilde exists, it's uniquely determined. In other words, there is only one such matrix that can fulfill both equations here. And for this reason, we have a better notation for this matrix here. We write A inverse instead of A tilde. And this is then what we call the inverse matrix of the matrix A. So now we know there is at most only one such inverse matrix of A. There you should see, only then this notation here makes sense. Okay, and now the existence of such an inverse matrix we can put into a definition. So we call a square matrix A an invertible matrix if such an inverse matrix exists. Moreover, there are also other equivalent names for this. Either one says the matrix is non-singular or one says the matrix is regular. In the end, all these terms mean the same thing, namely that the matrix has an inverse. However, here in the definition, we can reformulate that by using the corresponding linear map. So on the map level, this invertibility just means that we have a bijective map. Okay, and now if this map here is not bijective, we call the matrix A singular. And of course, in the same sense as before, we could also call it non-invertible or non-regular. However, indeed, most common is the term singular. Okay, now by also using the map level, we can define this inverse of A. So let's formulate it as before, a matrix A tilde, also a square matrix of the same size, is called the inverse of A, if the induced map of A tilde is the inverse of FA. So you see, we can formulate the whole definition here just by using linear maps. But of course, in order to do this, you need to know the nice correspondence between matrices and linear maps. However, then this whole thing here does not look complicated at all. So now here, a bijective map FA has an inverse we can denote by f to the power minus 1. And now this inverse here should coincide with the induced map of A tilde. And then as before, we know A tilde is uniquely determined, which means we now can write A to the power minus 1 for this uniquely determined inverse of A. Okay, this means now we can summarize the whole property here. So on the one hand, we have inverses with respect to the map level, and on the other hand, with respect to the matrix multiplication. However, we have seen it's exactly the same thing. So on a map level, we have f of a inverse composed with f of a is equal to the identity map, simply because they are inverse maps of each other. So therefore, it also works the other way around. So in other words, here for the maps from the left and from the right hand side, we have the same inverse map. 
Okay, and now on the other hand, we can also formulate this with the matrices. So we have A inverse A with the matrix multiplication is equal to the identity matrix. And then also, of course, the other way around, A times A inverse is equal to 1. And with this, we have learned what inverses of matrices are. If you look at the map level, you see they are not arbitrarily defined. We see there is an exact reason why we do it exactly in this way. Okay, and then in the next videos, we will see why this is all useful for other calculations. So we will talk about the properties of inverses and how we can calculate it. So therefore, I really hope that I see you in the next videos and have a nice day. Bye.